in children is mostly allergic asthma, which means that it is driven by a type of cell in the lungs called the eosinophil. And it is usually associated with triggers from environmental allergens, such as house dust mite or grass pollen. And it is responsive usually to the standard treatments for asthma, which include inhaled steroids, and these are the medicines to prevent exacerbations, as well as the reliever inhalers, which are usually blue, that help to relax the muscles in the airways to provide relief from asthma symptoms. In adults, you often have other types of asthma, which are not allergic asthma, for example, related to obesity. The most common symptoms of asthma in children will be the classical symptoms of wheezing, which is a high pitched whistling sound. A lot of parents think that wheezing is a bit of a rattling sound at the back of the throat, but actually that's more likely to be due to post nasal drip due to allergic rhinitis, which I have spoken about in one of my previous videos. So wheezing is a high pitched whistling sound most often heard when the child breathes out, and this is usually triggered by things like going into cold weather suddenly, or by exercise, or if the child is having an asthma exacerbation. Then cough, particularly a dry cough, is associated with asthma exacerbations or uh, uncontrolled asthma. This is usually a dry cough at night, but can also be during the day. There are many causes of a cough, and so it's important to go through a systematic approach whenever you're dealing with a chronic cough. For example, certain types of coughs like habit coughs never occur at night. So the, the timing of the cough is also very important as well as the characteristic of the cough. Then if a child is having an asthma attack, they can have not just coughing and wheezing, but they can develop difficulty breathing which means that they can have an increase in the work of breathing and you can see them uh, breathing faster. And in this situation, it's really important that the child has a personalized asthma action plan so that the family know how to deal with this. Asthma is diagnosed mostly after the age of five because at that point, the child is able to have the motor skills to do the sophisticated breathing tests such as spirometry where the child needs to take a deep breath in and then blow out as fast as they can to see how well they're able to blow out within the first second of breathing. This is one of the aspects of asthma where if you do have asthma you have obstruction of the airways so you are unable to breathe out quickly. So that is a breathing test that can be done called spirometry. There's also uh, another type of way to monitor the asthma that parents and the patient can use, which are peak flows, where they actually breathe out three times in the morning and evening and see what their best peak flow is, which is how fast they can breathe out within one second. And they can then use this as a way to monitor their asthma control. And this forms an important part of the personalized asthma action plan. Then with regards to the other types of tests that you can do, there is another breathing test which looks for allergic inflammation of the lungs, which is exhaled nitric oxide. And again, the child needs to be able to breathe out for a prolonged period of time to be able to do that test. So all of those tests are the procedures that can be done to make a diagnosis of asthma. However, the most important thing for an asthma diagnosis is the history. And this can be taken from a very early age. It's really important to know when the symptoms started. If they started from birth, then you need to be thinking about some kind of structural problem. If they started a bit later on, then you need to be thinking about the causes for that. So even in children under the age of five, a diagnosis of asthma can be made. That is based on taking a good clinical history and examination, excluding other causes, 
that might be, for example, like post-nasal drip leading to a wet cough or like an infection. Many children get recurrent viral infections and can have viral induced wheeze, which is where they have only wheezing when they have a cold, but no symptoms outside of when they have a cold. And that is not asthma, that is viral induced wheeze and is managed in a slightly different way. So the other way to manage and diagnose asthma in children, whether that be under the age of five or over the age of five, is to, once you've taken your clinical history and examination and you think that an asthma diagnosis is likely, then you will do a trial of topical steroids to see if that reduces the symptoms or completely uh, takes away all symptoms that they have and then monitoring, for example, their peak flows if they're five or above or below that, monitoring their symptoms and then reviewing them again and deciding whether to stop the topical steroids, inhaled steroids, to see whether the symptoms return or not. During all of this, it's very important to provide inhaler device training, which we do in our clinic. And during that time, we'd also provide a prescription for the salbutamol or other reliever inhaler in case the child has an asthma exacerbation. And that is the way that you diagnose asthma in children under the age of five, as well as above the age of five, if you don't have access to these breathing tests, which we do have in our clinic. Asthma in children does often go away, particularly when puberty starts. There is a very strong interaction between hormones and allergies and asthma in this particular case. Similarly, in pregnancy, symptoms can improve or get worse during pregnancy. So there is this uh, peak before puberty. And after that, the children can have resolution of their symptoms in puberty. Sometimes the asthma symptoms can come back then later when the child is older. Uh, so it's really important to manage the asthma and not just wait for it to go away because we have to remember that asthma can kill. So it's very important to have appropriate assessment, diagnosis and management of asthma.